Congratulations on becoming a new agent. In this video, we're going to cover the top seven things that you need to immediately take care of now that you're a licensed real estate agent. If this is your first time to the channel, tap that notification bell, click the subscription button so you can be updated with the videos that we put out each and every week, giving you the best insight into the real estate industry. My name is Derek Reagan of the Digital Mayor Academy, founder of the Digital Mayor Academy. And I'm really excited because like many of y'all, I got into the real estate business and, and thought I had some idea of what I really need to accomplish getting in, but I'll be real honest, I was lost. There were so many different MLS boards, different realtor associations, uh, really just getting my bearings about me was a real struggle, right? And a lot, not a lot of realtors will share with you, your first three years of getting into the business can be very challenging if you don't have the right direction, the right coaching and the right supporting. So I really wanted to create this video because I see a lot of YouTubers out there creating videos with the top three things that you should do. And, and it's just a bunch of plain jargon. What we're going to get into today is the nitty gritty of what you really need to expect and take care of before you even think about selling a home. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. I'm going to share my screen right here as I've written these out for us. I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger and we're going to move this out of the way. All right, so the first seven things that you should now do now that you're a licensed agent, number one, sign up for your MLS, multiple listing service. This is what differentiates us as real estate professionals and your for sale by owner, you know, gal or girl, sorry, gal or guy out there trying to sell their home by themselves. So uh, your MLS, depending on your marketplace, can be sponsored by a handful of different boards. But just so you understand, Every licensed agent here in the United States has to be a part of the National Association of Realtors, NAR. And there's another organization as well, but just for this video, NAR is the biggest organization that most realtors have to be a part of. You have an annual fee that's due with them every single year. Okay, so you have your national board and then your MLS board. Your MLS board is going to be here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market is Mine is Metro Tax, but there's uh, Collin County, there's the Arlington Board, there's the Tarrant County. There's probably at least five to 10 different boards, depending on a major marketplace, just in your regional area. So don't think that you have to be bound by one, but just to kind of give you all some insight on what it costs to be a realtor each year, right? Again, the nitty gritty. I want to give you all the straight truth. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. You can expect to pay between about $1,000 to $2,000 a year, depending on your service, depending on your brokerage and, you know, your marketing materials and everything else. And when I say spend, this is really investing because, you know, again, ultimately we're here to make money. You sell one home in the Dallas-Fort Worth marketplace at a $350,000 price point, your commission is going to be roughly about ten dollars to $12,000. Now, again, one to $2,000 a year to be an active real estate agent, one home, you're already making it back fivefold, okay? So you have your National Association Board. You're going to have your local MLS board. These are going to be two annual fees. Now, typically, um, your board, um, your national board will have an annual fee. Your MLS board's probably going to give you a quarterly fee. I can tell you uh, for my organization here in the Dallas-Fort Worth, it's about 140 a quarter. And then we have an annual fee that's due as well. Now, one thing that many realtors may not talk about, and that's why I really wanted to create this video is to give you that direct insight, are what's going to be called your super fees or your smart lock fees. Um, this is what allows you, it's typically a blue box that realtors from listing agents put on their homes to give you access via Bluetooth on your cellular device to give you entry into a home, right? Now, some realtors are going to have lock boxes. You can buy a lock box for your listing, just giving y'all some insight. But ultimately, you're going to have these three fees that are going to be due on an annual basis. If you don't pay for your super fee, well, you won't be able to get in some of these listings. And you're going to be looking real silly sitting outside with your client trying to get into a home. So right there are the three topical fees. As I mentioned, it's going to be about $1,000 to $2,000 a year just in annual and board fees. So sorry, national fees and board fees. Um, now moving on to number two, after you set up and selected your MLS, you can go back and forth. They're all typically about the same price, even if some say they're a lot cheaper. Um, that said, now you're licensed, you have MLS service. Before you even think about interviewing brokers, I want to give you all some wise words of wisdom that one of my real estate coaches taught me that I really wish I had learned from day one being in the real estate industry that no one else taught me. It is not the best realtor who wins. It is the best marketer. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to being in business and owning your own business. You have to understand, it is not the person who fills out the best contracts, who provides the best support, even though we like to do these things. Ultimately, it's going to be about how big of an audience that you can reach. How much outbound marketing can you generate to really become known in your marketplace as an influencer, as the go-to real estate expert? Now, we'll talk about strategies, and if you're following our channel You'll watch some of our videos where we talk about all different techniques and resources, strategies, systems, and processes that you can utilize to grow your influence and attract clients versus chase them. But ultimately, in this video, understand that as we, before we move forward. It is not the best realtor who wins. It is the best marketer, okay? Go ahead and write that down because I promise you it's going to make a lot of sense as you continue to go throughout your real estate career. Step number three. Begin interviewing brokers. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. You're, you're going to find a handful of different brokers are probably already going after you, sending you, you know, emails and all sorts of things because understand you are the value piece, right? Every broker, doesn't matter who it is, whether you're going from a flat fee, 0% brokerage to a brokerage that charges 60, 40, and maybe you're relying on the brokerage brand to bring you business, right? Some of these more um, higher class brokerages, like maybe Sotheby's, right? Some of these will take a bigger fee because they have a larger brand versus some of these 0% brokerages who just take a flat fee. Understand, you don't really get much support, right? You get what you pay for in life. That's the truth of it. So before you pick a broker, you want to make sure that you're asking a handful of different questions, right? Ultimately, number one question you want to find out right off the bat is what are the splits? Like I mentioned, some of these larger brokerages will take a 60-40 split. Some of your local boutique broker brokerages may do a 70-30 split. If you're on a team, they may charge you additional fees. So make sure that you get that information up front before joining any team or any brokerage. Now, the brokerage I'm with is an 80-20 split. It's typically about industry standard, okay? Usually we have different caps. Ask it that question. If you're not familiar, ask it and they'll tell you. For us, it's $16,000. That's usually about eight transactions. Sounds like a lot right off the bat, but again, we didn't get in this business just to sell eight homes a year. We're getting in this business to sell 16, 20, 30, 40, I mean, 50, 100 homes, building a team that maybe even sells thousands of homes each year. So depending on what your goals are, these are going to be very important questions to ask. Now, we talked about the splits. Now, let's talk about marketing and resources. On these 0% fee brokerages, do you get a website? Are you getting a CRM? For those of y'all who don't know what a CRM is already, it's called a Customer Relationship Management Tool, CRM. This is essentially for uh, some of my older people out here who remember our Rolodex. Uh, Rolodex was where we kept all of our contact information written down on a piece of paper. The digital version of that is your CRM where you're going to be able to manage it and create different processes to follow up with your clients in the future. So ask your brokerage or a potential brokerage, do they provide that? And at what cost do they provide that? Now... If you are with a brick and mortar office, another great question you want to ask are what are the desk fees, right? Because this is something that really isn't broadcasted. But again, if you're getting into the business, you want to know what are the desk fees? Because I'll tell you the reality of it is in my real estate career, I probably went into the office maybe two, maybe three times. And that was probably because I had to do some sort of internal trainings. Most of your business as a realtor is going to be done either in your home office or out in the field at your client's home, right? Or out showing them some different listings at different locations around your marketplace. So understand these desk fees are really, are really that really start to add up on your brokerage, right? Because again, whether you're making sales or not, they're still charging you money just to be a part of the company. So ultimately, very important questions to ask. Now, again, the biggest thing, especially being a new realtor, what is the training? right? With your 0% brokerages, you pay for what you get. It uh, doesn't matter what brokerage you're with. If you're a new agent, you can expect to have a mentor. Doesn't matter, right? And, and a good company will give you a mentor because you're a new agent, right? There's a lot to learn. I'm sure you understand that just getting through school and still kind of feeling lost. If I told you to write a contract right now, even though you may have reviewed it, probably wouldn't be able to do it too successfully. So don't look at a mentor as a bad thing. Uh, they will typically take about 10% of the first three transactions after that you're cleared. doesn't matter what brokerage you're with. Again, that's typically the standard of what we see out here in the industry. And again, that's more so for your training. Now, the biggest thing with that is finding a mentor who's going to invest in you. And that's a really big thing because my mentor, you know, not going to say any names, 
you know, he, he took a good chunk of my commissions right off the bat. One of my first deals was an $800,000 house. He took his 10%. But he really wasn't there to provide me that support that I really wanted. He didn't give me marketing resources. He didn't give me any sort of insight on what I should be doing. And ultimately, I had to do what you're doing right now. I had to go to YouTube University. I had to, to ask some of my friends. I was kind of embarrassed. I, you know, And it's okay to feel that way. You're a new agent. You're going to have a lot of questions. And so it's really important that you ask these questions on the front end and that you really interview these people well, because if you don't, you're going to get into a business and you're going to feel like you have no one. And that's a very disheartening feeling because I felt it myself and I can tell you that. So again, broker fees, broker splits, desk fees, marketing fees, desk, uh, I mentioned desk fees, uh, mentor fees. These are going to be the basics that come with every brokerage. Um, except if you were with a virtual brokerage, you probably won't have a desk fee because a lot of the trainings and a lot of the support are, are doing what we're doing now via Zooms and via on, online web portal training. So um, support, training, these are things that you want to make sure that you're asking as well. I'm not going to mention any names out there, but there are brokerages that charge you roughly $1,200 for your new agent training, $1,300. So you just literally paid all this money to become a realtor. And now they want you to pay another thousand dollars plus just to get access to the training you need to go out there and make money so they can make a little money, right? A good brokerage is going to have almost unlimited training. And if you're with a good team, a good mentor, and a good coach, you're going to get access to even more advanced training that may not be offered by the brokerage. So uh, if you'd like to know what some of that is, check out our Digital Mayor Academy right there. You know, things like this and, and different courses that maybe your mentors and coaches have put together are really going to be that uh, icing on the cake that you really want to see from a broker. It's someone who's willing to invest in you, to give you the resources, give you the systems and processes that you need to be uh, successful without nickel and timing you every time you turn around. So um, those are the bigger ones that we want to talk about on this video. Make sure just continue to dive into our other videos as we continue to provide insight. If y'all do have any questions, click the link below, schedule a call with us so we can help you out and get some insight additionally. Um, moving on to step number four, now that you've interviewed brokers and you picked one, one last thing I want to add, what, what is the ceiling? What are your goals? For me, I was always visionary. I wanted to be you know, the best of the best. I wanted to create a, a global business. I wanted to do real estate all over the world, all over the country. And some brokers don't allow that. Essentially, if you're work, working with a local broker, you may only be able to become a team lead and the broker's at the top, right? You're capped, right? Once you hit team lead and you want to own your own business, you have to go out there, create that, um, create the systems, create the processes, create the insurance, do all of these things, right? We're working with some of these brokerages, um, virtual brokerages, EXP is one that I'm part of. It essentially allows you to be able to scale your organization, your team all over the country. And so um, in my organization, we have about 335 agents spread out from Canada to Florida, Hawaii, Texas, all the way in between. So uh, again, ultimately ask yourself what the goals are, but we'll talk more on that uh, at step seven in the developing a business plan. But number four, learn the current market conditions. So now you've gone out there, you've joined your MLS after you successfully became a licensed agent. Now you're, you've already signed up for a board now you're signed up for a brokerage and you're doing all the things that you need to do, but ultimately it's going to be about the market conditions, right? You as a new agent, you're, you're going to be hesitant with a lot of these things, right? You, you didn't experience the market shift that we may have experienced over the last two years. Uh, for those of y'all who are unaware with interest rates at two to 3%, we just saw the highest and fastest appreciating two years in real estate history. Interest rates at the time I'm making this video, it's about 2023, um, February 22nd. So that gives y'all some idea. We're seeing roughly about six and a quarter percent interest rates now. So payments have jumped up almost eight hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on the home. Now, don't let that necessarily scare you because there's all sorts of creative financing uh, techniques that you can utilize to essentially buy down interest rates and do all the things that you can always find the angle. Right? People are always going to need to move, whether it's for work, whether it's for relocating. Uh, in my local marketplace, homes are still very affordable when comparing it to, to uh, California, to New York, and maybe you're in these marketplaces, right? You, you have to find that silver lining, the way that you can continue to create relationships as there are businesses, there are people always moving into your marketplace, believe it or not. So don't let that scare you. You just have to be aware. So start tuning into uh, the financial news, start watching the Federal Reserve, start you know listening to your coaches, to your mentors, plugging into your brokerage to get the best idea. 
get a great lending partner. This is going to be very key as well. So they can provide you with the insight you need without being a loan officer, right? And we'll talk more on strategies on how to do all these things further on into your real estate career and into our different videos. But understand you have to know the current market conditions. And, and that's something that's going to be a continuous basis. Uh, before I got into real estate, I was an EMS. I was a paramedic for about five years. And so getting into your real estate career, I, I coin it to be very similar to this. It's like drinking water out of a fire hose. You're going to be on, like overloaded with trainings, with different market updates, with trying to get clients yesterday, right? Because that's why most of us got in this business was because we needed money to pay our bills, right? We heard about real estate agents and the real estate industry making financial millionaires and all these different things and financial freedom that we were really seeking. So we're really get to, ready to get to work, but understand it's going to take time, right? Nothing happens overnight. And that's the reality of it is. So you have to Understand that you're getting in this business. If you're hungry, that's going to be the biggest thing that really is the difference maker between those who have success and those who don't. Those who go, go out, put in the work, listen to their coaches, listen to their mentors, listen to their brokers, and do what they're saying to do, right? Don't try to reinvent the wheel. You know, you know, those you know, who are having success, do what they're saying to do, and you'll have that success as well. I promise you that. So we talked about step number four. You've already gotten your brokerage. You're already starting to learn the market conditions. Now you have to understand, again, going back to rule number two, it's not the best realtor who wins, it's the best marketer. So what are the highest leverage activities that you can be doing now that you're a licensed agent working with the brokerage? Okay, so understand this, another high level um, piece of knowledge that one of my mentors and coaches shared with me that no one else is going to tell you in this space. I promise you, you're going to hear it here first. High leverage activities. When you're working with the buyer, right? You have to take your one buyer to 20 different homes. Understand that. You're hopping in your car. You're driving 45 minutes to one home, 20 minutes. To you're going to spend all day, a bunch of gas, a bunch of time, and they may not even like any of the homes that you saw. They may ghost you. They may disappear on you, right? So ultimately, understand in the hierarchy in the chain of command, there's a saying. It's called, you have to list to live, meaning working as a selling agent, as a listing agent, is going to be the tip top highest leverage activity that you can be doing in the real estate industry, right? Because when you have one listing, you have 20 people coming to your one home. All you have to do is maintain that one home versus going and trying to look at 20 different homes, spending all day driving around, right? Now, each one has its pros and cons, but ultimately, if you're wanting to scale your business, many people and many of your agents aren't going to tell you this because they want you to be the buyer's agent. Why? because they're the listing agent. So understand that. From a, a high level perspective, listings, buyer agent leases, commercial, residential leases typically are a little more challenging because most landlords are private owners. They don't have to abide by the Real Estate Commission, National Association of Realtors. So if they don't want to pay a commission, if they don't want to do certain things, it is their business and their operation and their property. They can choose to do it what they want or not. Now, that said, your client probably is still going to be really interested in that, right? And typically, leases are going to be anywhere from about, you know, $1,000 to $3,000, depending on your marketplace. Certainly can go above that. I'm not saying it can't, maybe four or $5,000. But ultimately, if you're working with someone who's leasing a property, they may pay one month's rent, right? Or apartment locators out there, not knocking them. Hey, you can build a business around it. We'll talk more on that in some different videos. But ultimately, when we think about the hierarchy and chain of command here, you want to be a listing agent, then a buyer's agent, and then, of course, maybe working with leases. And, and I say this just to be very transparent with you because you're getting in this business, you're wanting to make money, and I want to make sure that you are not just running around on that rat wait, rat wheel that many agents are actually doing out there. And so maybe you are in the industry and you're watching this video and you've never heard these things before. Well, well welcome to the channel, the Real Estate Mastery channel, as we are here to give you that very transparent information. Because again, I've been there. And so I'm trying to save many of y'all that headache, that struggle that, that I didn't know, the challenges, right? And so Going up to the next step, step number six, now that you've understood or at least been communicated to what are the HLAs in your business, and we'll talk more on those as our video series continue, you want to make sure that you're setting up your back office. And this is very important because you don't want to have to just continue writing the same contracts over and over and over and over again. To become efficient, you have to set up systems and processes. So set, part of setting up your back office is going to be you, know, you having preset templates if you don't know what that means, 
typically you're, you're going to be logging into maybe a platform called Skyslope. This is where we do our transactions. And that's where most of your payouts are going to happen. You have to have all the documentation to get paid in this business. So whenever you're submitting a contract, if you need help writing up a contract here in Texas, make sure to watch our other video that we put together uh, to write up single family residential contracts, giving y'all some insight into that. But again, if you're out in your local or out in your local marketplace outside of Texas, understand your back office is very, very important. This is going to save you a lot of time. Right. And we've talked about different um, strategies to put in your IABS information about broker services and some of these different forms into your email so you can expedite that. But ultimately, if you have not set up your back office, you're going to be spending your time writing some same contracts over and over and over again. And when that's, again, not the highest leverage activity that you can be doing. Pro tip for anyone out there understand what a TC is. A TC is a transaction coordinator. Now, these are very important. This has been a game changer in my business. Find you a good transaction coordinator. If you don't have one, we have one. We're happy to, to link you up and connect you within our organization because she has allowed us to be able to not focus on the, the minute things that from you know getting the documents uploaded to making sure they're scanned. Again, know how to do these things, but ultimately, your job is to go out there making connections, working with clients and signing contracts. And ultimately, those are the two highest leverage activities that you can be doing in a business. So the less time you're spending working on documentation, the more time you're going to have to be actually be out there making money, doing the things that really matter. So set up your back office, working with a transaction coordinator is going to save you tons of time. And then, of course, now that you've gotten all the the back end stuff set up and you're starting to learn your market and you understand what the higher leverage activities are. Now it's how can you get more opportunities to take that swing, right? Because ultimately everything else, the documentation, the paperwork, this is mundane stuff that isn't necessarily the most important thing. When you can be working with clients, showing them homes, persuading them and, and really helping them either buy or sell a property. So now you need to develop a business plan. We're going to keep it very high level in this one. We're creating a whole nother video on developing a business plan for new agents. So make sure you all watch that as it's really going to deep dive into different marketing strategies, showing you what the highest leverage marketing tactics you can do, the systems and processes that we use to grow uh, and that a lot of our agents are having success with all across the country. So Woo, what a mouthful. We're going to keep this video nice, short, and sweet. This is, again, are the first seven things that you should almost immediately do in 2023 now that you're a licensed real estate agent. To recap, sign up for your MLS board, get your super fees, get that out of the way. Now that you're in the real estate market, try to understand what it means. It's not the best realtor, it's the best marketer. So when you're out there interviewing brokers, ask them what sort of marketing resources they have. Ask them what type of splits they have, desk fees they have, cap fees they have. These are very important questions to ask your brokerage. Uh, is there a mentor that you're going to be assigned with? Are there team additional fees that you have to pay? Uh, does the team provide you leads? Are the leads free or are you having to pay for those leads? Again, nothing's free in this world. Understand that. But- you know, some teams out there are really doing the number on their agents, maybe charging 50, 50 or 60, 40, where you're getting the 40 and they're getting the 60. And I'll tell you, you I've been there and, and I wasn't there long. I'll just say that. So then, of course, moving on to step three or sorry, uh, after step three, learn the market conditions. You, you picked a brokerage. You want to learn, OK, what's going on? What are the interest rates? Do I have a good lender that I can work with who can kind of fill me in on some of that? And how can I strategically put my self in a position where I can continue to gain more information from that. And then of course, learn your HLAs, highest leverage activities. We talked about the hierarchy, listing agent, buyer's agent leases. Uh, set up your back office, Skyslope, or maybe one of your CRMs on the back end to help you automate a lot of the systems and processes that need to be put in place. And then pro tip, find you a transaction coordinator. If you don't know what this is, make sure you do some diligence. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to our team. We're happy to get y'all set up. And then of course, develop a business plan. This is where the meat and potatoes are as you continue to grow your business and you've handled a lot of the smaller things. So ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure if you found value from this, that you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel as we're going to continue to put out videos each and every week, giving you the best insight into the real estate industry so you can have success growing your business and achieve that true financial freedom that you got into the real estate industry for. My name is Derek Reagan. And until next time, we'll see y'all later.